CISA passes in the Senate, the UK IP bill heats up, and strong crypto apps just dropped in the nick of time. Are we doomed or empowered through technology? All that coming up today on ThreatWire. Greetings, Internet. I'm Darren Kitchen, and this is ThreatWire for November 4th, 2015. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. And shout outs to our supporters over at Patreon for keeping us independent and ad free. Today, we're going to continue the wonderful story of the internet. And if you haven't been following along, it is an age old classic. It's a uh, government creates national, uh, international network. Companies turn internet into mega media commerce platform. Government illegally spies on citizens using the internet. Whistleblowers expose governments with their pants down. Citizens get mad, companies get sad, and government seeks to make spying legal. So, we're going to pick it up in 2012, when the Stop Cyber Spying Week and the subsequent Internet Blackout Day of 2012 did a ton then to thwart CISPA, an evil cyber intelligence and sharing bill. Uh, that was 2012 though. And since then we have seen the likes of target breaches and Sony hacks and Office of Personnel Management fiascos that could go on and on and on. Headline after headline pressuring those to do something. And in political terms, that means pass an overbearing law that'll likely violate your privacy and do dick all for protecting cyber infrastructure. But hey, CISA, it just passed in the Senate. And now it's heading to the House. And if it indeed passes, expect your private data to go from internet companies funneled straight through the DHS and on to the FBI and the NSA. And as 65 security experts put it in an open letter to the Senate, quote, Sharing users' private information creates new security risks. This excess sharing would not aid cybersecurity and would significantly harm privacy and could actually undermine you, our ability to effectively respond to threats. That's right, instead of your data just belonging to the Twitters and Facebooks of the world, it would actually be in the hands of the governing power that can't even seem to keep personnel records of 21 million citizens away from hackers. And the limited liability that are actually offered to the corporations that do cooperate in this proposed law may actually deter them from improving their security, or more likely, people like you and I would be much more hesitant to use an online service if they knew that their data was being funneled straight to the government, which is a big concern for the likes of Apple and Google who rely on consumer trust. So when unfettered data sharing between corporations and government becomes the status quo, who are you going to trust with your private info? Speaking of proposed legislation from 2012 that's come back from the dead to rear its ugly head, yes, our UK neighbors this week have moved forward a similar bill to the 2012 draft communications data bill, which you may have heard of as the Snoopers Charter. And this revised bill, the Investigatory Powers Bill, or IP bill, will force internet service providers to keep records of the websites of their subscribers access for up to 12 months. That would allow law enforcement agencies and intelligence agencies to be able to request your data, you know, for the children or something. Uh, this would actually complement the Counterterrorism and Security Act of 2015, which requires ISPs to retain data linking specific devices to IP addresses, but not web logs, you know, because the UK government can't figure out how to reverse resolve an IP address to a domain name or something. Insert WTF face here. This, <laughs> by the way, the way it's currently written, it's not the complete URL snarf kind of thing you would expect. It's actually rather truncated. So uh, instead of uh, think webmd.boots.com, not webmd.boots.com slash is it supposed to be purple and enlarged. Uh, the t <laughs> I just, I don't know what to do with this. I think it's time to start considering an offshore VPN. What do you think? And finally, we cast off the fears from our data snooping overlords and take back our privacy with strong crypto. That's right, this week we have seen some much needed advances for Team Screw You G-Man in the way of secure messaging apps, which neither proposed US or UK bill could actually do a damn thing about. That's right, I'm talking about the open source tech secure and red phone apps from Moxie Marlin Spikes open whisper systems that have merged into a slick new user-friendly app called Signal. It's been out for a while on iPhone and now it is hitting Google Play Store for Android and that is a big deal because this may be the first PKI loving secure text and voice app that even your mom can use. So if you're going home for the holidays, you should really switch them all over to the encrypted text messaging service used by Edward Snowden and hackers abound. And while you're at it, and while we're on this topic, 
do check out the beta of Tor Messenger. It is a simple open source instant messenger app which incorporates the off the record encryption protocol and it puts it over the Tor network. It's by the folks over at the Tor project that actually brought us the Tor browser. And it is just one of those things that just kind of works, which I love. The Tor PR person summed it up nicely for Wired when they said, quote, with Tor Messenger, your chat is encrypted and anonymous, so it's hidden from snoops, whether they're a government or a foreign country or a company trying to sell you boots. Speaking of boots, look at the paws on Charlie, our internet pup from Patreon. That's right, this show is supported from the parents of cats and dogs everywhere through our crowdfunding at patreon.com slash threatwire. And even if you don't have an actual pet of your own, you can live vicariously through the glory of a free and open internet full of frolicking fur pals. And you can even contribute a few cents an episode over at our Patreon at patreon.com slash threatwire where we strive to meet our milestone of three times a week for a rotating cast of Shannon Morris, Patrick Norton, and myself. So I hope you will contribute to help us keep this coming completely independent and ad-free. And of course, if you can't donate, a like, a share, a subscribe, all of those go a long way too. You can find our full episodes, all of them, way back at... Uh, threatwire.net as well as links to our social networks and all the other ways to contribute. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen and I will see you on the internet.